Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger. And in this lecture, we will arrange the various groups of dinosaurs on a cladogram and distinguish the major clades, the Saurischia and Ornithischia, from one another. Between the years of 1849 and 1884, the famous English anatomist Richard Owen published a series of four monographs on the history of British fossil reptiles. In this large multi-volume, Owen lay out his ideas that several of the newly discovered fossils from the Mesozoic of southern England belonged to a new group of reptiles. He called them the Dinosauria. The term Dinosauria had appeared in an earlier report made in 1841 and 1842 when he received a grant to travel around uh, southern England to examine some of the fossils of large extinct reptiles that had been found in the early 1800s. Owen visited the Stonesfield Quarry near the town of Oxford where in 1797 a student brought in a remarkable jaw discovered in what today is known as the Jurassic Tayton limestone. The jaw and a number of other bones had been the study of William Buckland, who named the fossil Megasaurus. It was beautifully illustrated by his wife, Mary Buckland, who had been working on illustrating the work of the French anatomist George Cuvier for his earlier publications. Now, Cuvier had urged uh, the Bucklands to publish the description of the bones from Oxford. It was not until 1827 when another famous dinosaur collector, Gillian Mantell, would give the creature the species name, Megliosaurus bucklini. The next place Owen traveled to was closer to London, the famed localities of Gillian Mantell himself, which had produced another large fossil reptile Mantell had named Iguanodon, after the modern iguana lizard. Here, 40 miles south of London, Mantell and his wife Marianne had found some unusual teeth in a rock quarry. Gillian had become obsessed with the fossils discovered by Mary Anning and had spent his days looking in the Cretaceous chocks north of the coast and closer to London. He found some fossils from what today is regarded as Cretaceous near the small town of Cuckfield. There was another specimen in the collections of Gillian Mantell, a large reptile fossil with furious looking spikes named Hyliosaurus, found near the town of Crawley in Tilgate Park, which today is a golf course. Owen had previously seen the specimen when Mantell had presented the specimen to the New Geological Society of London in 1832. Knowing that these three specimens represented a possible new group of large reptiles, Owen erected the term Dinosauria in his large monograph on British fossil reptiles, the terrible lizards. Now near the end of the 1800s, the group would explode in the number of fossils referred to the group as new fossils were found in Belgium and in New Jersey, radically expanded on the number and diversity of the group. By 1888, enough were known that the British paleontologist Harry Seeley suggested that Dinosauria was not a single group, but two groups of large reptiles that lacked a shared ancestry. He called these two groups the Saurischians and Ornithischians, or the lizard hips and the bird hips, and he advocated for the abandonment of the term dinosaur. History has proven that both Owen and Seeley were right, as the term dinosauria has remained, but the group is divided into the Saurischia and the Ornithischia following Seeley's recommendations. Let's look at how this division is made and how you can differentiate dinosaurs into either the Saurischia 
or Ornithischia clades. Now, both Saurischia and Ornithischia dinosaurs have an open acetabulum. Within the Saurischia, or the lizard hip dinosaurs, the pubis bone projects forward, while in the Ornithischia, the pubis bone projects posteriorly with a pre-pubis process anterior to the acetabulum or hip socket. The condition somewhat resembles the hip found in birds, although as we'll learn that the birds arose from the Saurischian dinosaurs. Let's place each of the major groups of dinosaurs on the cladogram distinct and distinguish them as either members of the Ornithischia or Saurischia clades. The Saurischia contain the mostly carnivorous theropods like Allosaurus, as well as the long neck dinosaurs, such as the prosauropods and the sauropod dinosaurs, the giant Patasaurus and Diplodocus dinosaurs of the late Jurassic of North America. The Ornithischia include the armored dinosaurs like Stegosaurus and Ankylosaurus the hadrosaurs or duck-billed dinosaurs, the dome-headed pachycephalosaurs, and the horned dinosaurs, the ceratopsian dinosaurs like triceratops. Two groups of dinosaurs arose during the late Triassic with the Ornithischia becoming completely extinct by the end of the Cretaceous and the Saurischia only represented by the modern group that arose from them, the birds. All right, you should be able to arrange the various groups of dinosaurs on a cladogram and distinguish the major clades, the Saurischia and Ornithischia, from one another when shown a picture of the pelvis. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin.berger.org. Links are found in the description below.